Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another uh, awesome math video. This one is uh, my first quarantine video for uh, 2021. So exciting times, new times here, no doubt. Um, but over the next little while, I, I'm going to have to make some videos because we're currently isolating from each other. And uh, I guess that means that... Uh, we got to keep going, so we're going to do this. Uh, so recently in class, uh, with my students, we've been reviewing some square roots, cube roots, and other things, and how to reduce them when they have variables and non-perfect squares. So I thought I would make a video for my students to help refresh their memory on how to deal with square roots and variables. So the, this is focused simply on variables and nothing else. All right, so. First thing we need to remember is that the square root actually just means x to the one half. So anytime you have a square root, no matter how simple it might be, all it actually means, so if you have 9, the square root of it, really you can rewrite that as 9 to the one half. So square root actually means a exponent of a half. So that's, that's something that you probably learned somewhere along the way. And we did it last year. And uh, now we need to sort of take that knowledge to be able to uh, recognize why variables are perfect and why they aren't. So if we look at something like x to the 6. So, you know, in practice, we wouldn't necessarily write this. But let's change x to the 6 all as x to the 6 to the 1 half. So you get rid of the root. And you put one half there instead of the root because we just learned or we already know square root means exponent of half so then what we do this is a power of a power we would multiply these exponents so that becomes six times a half so i'll actually write that step six times one over two and of course half of six is three and you can see we went from that square root of x to the 6, and that equals x to the 3. So x to the 6 is a perfect square variable, you know, if that's the way you want to think of it. So now, I want you guys to try to make the connection. What would make something a perfect square variable? So let's try x to the 14. So I'll do the exact same steps with this now. So we would think about, well, it's x to the 14 all to the half. And then you'd multiply these two together. So it would be x to the 14 times 1 over 2. And then, of course, you get x to the 7. So again, x to the square root of x to the 14 is x to the 7. Now, in practice, I would never write these steps. I, you just got to think of it. And the key is that something, a variable is a perfect square if it has an even exponent. So if that exponent is divisible by 2, you can take the square root of the entire thing, and all you're doing is dividing the exponent by 2. So the square root of x to the 150, very straightforward. Well, what's 150 divided by 2? It's 75. So the square root of 150 is x to the 75. So anything that has an even exponent, no matter how complicated, um, no matter how complicated, all you need to do is divide by 2. All right, so that's easy enough. Let's try one more. So for example, x, and let's keep it, keep it simple, x to the 22. So x to the 22, well, 22 is divisible by 2. So the square root of x to the 22 is x to the 11, just like that. So I know it seems kind of simple, but really, there's nothing more to it than that. Now, what happens if you get something that's not perfect. So here's the rule. Actually, here's the rule. If a, I don't know why I got a there. If a variable under a square root has an exponent divisible by 2, it is a perfect square. All right? So if a variable under a square root has an exponent divisible by 2, it is a perfect square. So there's my rule. My grammar. Terrible. I can hear the class making fun of me already. All right. So. Let's try a few of these non-perfect squares. So, you know, if we try the old technique that we just had, so if I go x to the 3 
times 1 over 2. Well, you can see that this doesn't work out very neat. You know, x to the 3 over 2. So that's still, the way that is, that's still a radical. Because we have that exponent right there, remember this stuff. They, the top number is the exponent. The bottom number is the index. Because we still have that index, this thing is still a root. So it doesn't work out very nice. So we have to treat this a little differently. So I'm just going to erase this. So it's my eraser. Well, that didn't work. The eraser. There we go. I'll get this figured out, guys. No worries. All right. Mr. B got you. Mr. B got you back. All right. So, so what we do is ideally what we like to do is treat it the same way we would treat a non-perfect square number. We want to break it up into a perfect square and a non-perfect square. So for a perfect square variable, all we need to do is get an even exponent. So the, the next closest even exponent that's less than 3 is x to the 2, right? And if I break this up into x to the 2 and x to the 1, I've still got x to the 3 because if I add these exponents together, 2 plus 1, I still get 3. So these things are equal. The only thing I did is I broke this up into a perfect square right there and a non-perfect square. And really, to find it, all we have to do is walk back 1. So if I'm at 3, my lowest perfect square is x to the 2, or my biggest perfect square that divides is x to the 2. right? So I just walk back 1. That's it. So now my next step is to break it up into my perfect square, which is the square root of x squared, and then times by the square root of x to the 1. So the square root of x squared is actually, I just divide that by 2, it's just x, right? So 2 divided by 2 is just x. And then this non-perfect square here that's all by itself, there's absolutely nothing I can do. And then I'm not going to write that one there. But you, can, you certainly could if you want it. So the square root of x to the 3, if I break it down as a mixed radical, is x to the root x. That's it. So that's the technique. Works every time. Watch this. So x to the 11, I, I walk back 1. So I write x to the 10, which is a perfect square because it's divisible by 2. And then x to the 1, just like that. So now I break it up in two pieces x to the 10, and then just square root of x. Now, I won't put the 1 there now. So the square root of x to the 10, all i got to do is divide this by 2. I get x to the 5, square root x, just like that. One more time. My computer is uh, it's a weird noise, and I don't know if you can hear it. All right, so x to the 300, I walk it back 1. And then I put my 1 in, of course. And then I got square root of 300. X to the 300, sorry, not just 300. And then square root of x. So the square root of x to the 300 is x to the 150 times root x. And there it is, guys. There is um, how to deal with non-perfect square variables and how to reduce them down to a mixed radical. So you're probably not going to see these by themselves. You'll see them mixed in with, um, with other things. But, you know, it's still really important to make sure that uh, you just look at when you have a complicated question, you look at the variables individually and then make a judgment call. All right, guys, I hope uh, this video makes a little bit of sense and that, um, you know, we can get back to class as soon as we can. But you know what? We're here. We're now. And we're going to make the best of it. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, you can like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys in class.